Do not be daunted by the enormity of the world's grief. Do justly now. Love mercy now. Walk humbly now. You are not obligated to complete the work, but neither are you free to abandon it. This quote comes from the Talmudic tradition. It's a Jewish commentary on Micah 6, 8. that was written sometime around uh, 200 CE, the common era. As we approach this election season, I invite us to take this ancient wisdom to heart. A friend of mine and I were talking recently about the upcoming elections. And she said something that was unsettling. The only way to vote, she believes, is to vote with her own self-interest in mind. Whomever, however, whatever you support when voting, make sure it's good for you. Our faith teaches us exactly the opposite. As Christians, when we vote, I believe we are called to vote, keeping the interests of the least of these in mind. Jesus says it is when we nourish the hungry and give a drink to the thirsty. It's when we welcome strangers and clothe the naked and care for the sick. It's when we extend friendship to those in prison that we are blessed by God and we receive his kingdom. We pray regularly for thy kingdom to come and thy will be done. And Jesus says it does come when we care for the fatherless child, the unemployed machinist the fearful widow, the detained refugee, the exhausted immigrant, the wrongly accused. It is those who have no power, no say-so, no voice in our society who need those of us who have the privilege of voting power to exercise it on their behalf. It's counterintuitive, especially to our individual idealism and the American way. But it is how followers of Jesus pursue liberty and justice for all. Biblically, justice doesn't produce fairness. Justice births shalom, a state of wholeness and completeness in which all creation exists in good and right relationship with one another and with God. So don't be daunted by the enormity of the world's grief. Do justice now. And love mercy now. Jesus teaches that God is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. And that we are to be merciful just as our Father is merciful. Grace is unmerited favor. It's a foundational truth of God's character that God looks lovingly on his creation, even though creation does nothing to deserve it. Grace is just a given. It's a presupposed foundation of God's relationship with creation. God saw it and deemed that it was good. Mercy, on the other hand, mercy is the presence of grace, of unmerited favor, when we are deserving of wrath. Imperfect, we break our relationship with and love for God. But God loves us anyway. That's mercy. The political environment, especially in an, an election year, can be merciless. There is a relentless highlighting of the opposition's faults and offenses. And with the internet and social media, all of us can have a platform to perpetuate this toxic public discourse. There are enough faults and offenses to go around in our society today. And of that, we must repent. 
But to love mercy calls us to extend grace to those who deserve condemnation. The Apostle Paul offers a helpful reminder on mercy. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. So do not be daunted by the enormity of the world's grief, but do justice now and love mercy now and walk humbly now. And if humility is anything, it's this. It's truly realizing that there is a God and we are not God. To walk humbly recognizes that our perspective is limited. To walk humbly acknowledges that we aren't qualified to judge anything, really. Even when it's our right and responsibility to vote. God is judge. And God is a merciful and just and humble one at that. So when we talk politics or mail in our ballots, when we go to the polls or wait for the returns or surf social media, we do so with humility, acknowledging that we don't know everything, that our perspective is not the only one out there and that someone else's perspective may in fact be better. You see, the United States of America, or any country for that matter, and the kingdom of God are not equivalents. Governments and nations rise and fall, but the kingdom of God outlasts them all. Because the kingdom of God transpires wherever God's people live in accordance with his spirit, which is just and merciful and humble which is loving and joyful, peaceful and patient, kind and good and faithful and gentle and self-controlled. The scriptures remind us that against such things, there is no law. So as you participate in the political process and exercise the right and responsibility that has been given to you, do not be daunted by the enormity of the world's grief. Do justly now. Love mercy now. Walk humbly now. You're not obligated to complete the work, but neither are you free to abandon.